On day one, I spawned into a haunting biome as a baby shadow raptor. My entire civilization of shadow raptors were running for their lives as meteors rained from the sky above. What's going on? I frantically searched for my parents to find them seeking cover in our colony. Bronzo, you need to hide before the Radiant Rex finds you. Before I could respond, a massive meteor crashed into them, killing them instantly. No! I looked up, and to my horror, I spotted an angelic T-Rex descending from the sky. This is the end for all shadow creatures. I, the Radiant Rex, will eliminate every last one of you. The Rex's Radiant Raptors rushed in to deal with any stragglers. I quickly took off running as fast as my legs could carry me. On day two, I was on the run from a pack of Radiant Raptors. As a Shadow Raptor, I was quick on my feet, but so were my pursuers. I ran as fast as I could, but it wasn't long before the sun rose into the sky. The sunlight set my shadowy scales on fire. I took cover in a nearby cave, surviving with only half a heart of health left. The sunlight hurts shadow dinosaurs, noted. Before I could catch my breath, the radiant raptors caught up to me. Looks like lunch came early. No, leave me alone. Suddenly, my shadow raptor powers awoke inside of me. I shot shadow blades that temporarily stunned the raptors. I took my chance and ran deep into the caves. I knew my attack wouldn't hold them off for long. On day three, I stumbled into a massive cavern filled to the brim with boiling hot lava. One dip in that stuff and I'm done for. I could hear the sound of the radiant raptors close behind, so I took my chances. I began to jump from rock to rock over the flaming hot chasm. The raptors finally caught up to me, but before they could jump, the entire room shook violently. To my surprise, the raptors turned around and ran away. This place is gonna blow. Run for your lives. Wait, am I inside of the volcano? To my horror, I realized I was in the middle of an active volcano and it was about to erupt. I quickly rushed to the other side of the chasm and looked for a way out. I managed to exit the mountain, but it was still daylight. I had to find cover if I wanted any chance of survival. I ducked under a tree as the volcano erupted into a fiery inferno. I don't think this tree is gonna hold for long. Just as I had thought, the lava set all of the nearby trees ablaze. I was forced to keep moving before the flames Flames caught up to me. On days four through six, I ran through the forest fire in search of cover. The leaves from all the trees around me were burning away, reducing my shade from the sun the longer I stayed. All the while, lava still crept in slowly behind me. Help! I ran until I was cornered under a lone tree. There wasn't anywhere else to go. I was either going to be melted by the lava or burnt in the sunlight. I have to think of something. In a moment of desperation, I dug out the ground beneath my feet. To my surprise, I plummeted into a cavern beneath me. Water broke my fall, saving me from instant death. When I finally regained my footing, I realized I was in some sort of den. I don't like the sound of that. I turned around and spotted a massive T-Rex looming over my shoulder. On days seven through nine, the T-Rex lunged at me with its massive jaws. No, 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 no! The dino's attacks were absolutely relentless. One after another, they kept coming. I could barely keep up. In response, I used my shadow blades to slice and dice into his thick hide, but it was like I didn't even hit him. The T-Rex reared back and fired off a breath weapon made of pure spirit energy. I was only narrowly able to dodge in time. My raptor claws seemed to keep the beast at bay, but his health was barely dwindling. The T-Rex Rex was too powerful. If I couldn't change the tide of battle, I was going to be killed. I have to think outside the box. Come on, Bronzo, think, think. Just then, I remembered that above the cavern was an ocean of lava from the volcano. I used my surroundings to my advantage and blasted holes in the ceiling with my shadow blade attacks. The lava slowly crept in from the ceiling above. As we continued to fight dino versus dino, I clang onto life as the lava inched closer and closer until finally it poured onto the horrific T-Rex, setting him ablaze. On days 10 and 11, I entered into another room where the T-Rex was hoarding mountains of treasure. I dug around the area and managed to find some armor for later. This will help protect me from the radiant raptors. I looked around more and spotted the remains of different dinosaurs that the T-Rex had munched on. I accidentally touched one of the piles of bones and it sprung to life. Whoa! As a shadow raptor, I can reanimate the dead. What's your name? Run! 
I turned around and realized the radiant raptors had finally found me. I tried to run, but more of them emerged until we were surrounded. I was already weakened from my previous battle, so their forces were too strong. I blacked out. On days 12 through 15, I woke up inside of a cage in the middle of a field surrounded by radiant raptors. Where am I? Just then, I realized the sun was creeping over the horizon. The radiant raptors planned to cook me alive in the sunlight. I tried to find a way to escape, but I couldn't get out. I thought I was done for, but the baby skeleton Rex jumped in to help. Kill the intruder. You can't kill me if I'm already dead. Dark magic rules. The raptors dogpiled onto the baby Rex, but to my surprise, he took the attacks like a pro. The skeleton Rex broke me out of my cage, and the two of us took off running as the raptors followed us in close pursuit. Thanks for the help. Who are you? The name's Jack. The two of us ran until we were met with a crossroads. You go down one path, and I'll go down the other. You know it's the right place when you get there. Hurry! On days 16 through 18, I ran down the path until I was led into an old graveyard. There, I spotted a mysterious fossil emitting dark energy. That looks important. I took a step closer, but suddenly the ground began to shake. To my horror, the massive T-Rex from a few days ago had returned. The lava didn't kill him? The beast lunged at me with its powerful jaws, and I dove in after the fossil. When I got my claws on it, my body began to transform. I grew larger and gained powerful spikes on my back. I was now an adult shadow raptor with 10 hearts. I used my strength to fight it out with my towering opponent. I slashed at blinding speed, hitting my marks against the T-Rex. With my newfound power came greater speed and agility. I used that agility to dash in and out of the combat. My powers as an adult shadow raptor allowed me to slice at the Rex and cut through the air to dodge. He could barely land a single hit. I felt faster than light and was able to catch my opponent completely off guard by quickly moving behind him. I roared and shot red shadow beams that drained my opponent's health, weakening him greatly. The T-Rex continued to be a formidable opponent as his skin was as tough as steel, but with my newfound strength, I was able to pierce right through it. My larger size gave me a higher advantage against the dino, leaving him struggling to deal with my attacks. Thanks to the strength of the fossil, I was strong enough to take out the horrific dino once and for all. I didn't have a moment to rest as I heard a familiar voice calling out to me. I looked off in the distance and spotted Jack running towards me. The radiant raptors were still pursuing him. We better keep moving. On days 19 through 21, Jack and I were being chased by the radiant raptors. We needed to lose them fast. Follow me. My skeletal friend led me to an area covered in shadow, and the two of us hid within the darkness. Once the raptors arrived, they tried to lurk around the corners, but our shadowy bodies kept us concealed. We know you're around here somewhere. Our boss is sure to sniff you out. The raptors left, but I knew that the Radiant Rex was sure to come looking for us. Let's build a base before he arrives. I got to work on making shelter from the forces of the Radiant Dinosaur. I built it as a massive raptor skull with soul fire accents. The back of the skull led into the actual base, and inside I was able to make bigger rooms. The ones I added for now were mine and Jack's. Jack got a fossil themed room with a huge bed that he could relax in. In mine, I made sure to have all the different crafting benches and tables I would need. Hey Jack, what happened with that fossil back there? That was one of the six shadow fossils. They're the only artifact strong enough to defeat the Radiant Rex. So I have to get the last five, and then I can take him out? Sign me up! Won't be easy. The fossils are located in the most dangerous parts of the world. And with the Radiant Rex's generals roaming around, they'll be even harder to get to. That's if the Radiant Rex doesn't get to us first. If collecting these fossils are the key to defeating the Radiant Rex himself and avenging my parents, then that's a risk I'm willing to take. With my new mission in mind, I built a room with six item frames to house all of my future fossils. With that, my expansion was done. Suddenly, the roof was blown open to reveal the Radiant Rex flying overhead. He found us, hide! Jack and I then ran outside. On days 22 through 24, the Radiant Rex landed outside of our base and sniffed around in search of us. We found a great hiding spot behind a ledge. Where I can smell your shadowy magic. Come out of your hiding place. Jack and I held our breath as the Rex stuck his nose closer and closer to us. I could feel my heart rate rising. I thought he surely had found us, and it took all of my willpower to stand still. Unfortunately, Jack gave in to the panic and ran out in a frenzy. Ah! There you are. 
The Radiant Rex shot a beam of powerful light magic at Jack, wounding him badly. Jack! Disgusting. That must have been the dark magic I smelled. The Radiant Rex took to the skies, and I rushed to Jack's side. On days 25 through 26, I was beside my friend, who was barely clinging to life. What happened? Aren't you immortal? Not to the powerful light of the Radiant Rex. The only way to save me now is to get the second fossil from the Haunted Woods. Then there's not a second to waste! I set off towards the Haunted Woods to find the next fossil, and to save my friend. After some travel, I arrived at the mysterious landscape. The sky was red, and I felt a feeling of dread inside of me. Even so, I stumbled through the forest of dead trees, looking for anything that could lead me to the fossil. Jack was already in critical condition, so I didn't have much time. I managed to find a heavily weeded area, and sensed dark magic nearby. I must be getting close. Suddenly, the plant sprung to life, and started to attack me all around. The vine slammed down around me, trying to smash me into the ground. There was no way I was going to let this thing get in my way. I struck back with my weapon, slicing to and fro at the thick vines. I sent out my shadow blades to dig into them as well, but it only served to make the plants matter. In the next instant, the plant bulb began to spit up little insects and seed bombs. The bombs exploded around me, and the insects began to swarm me relentlessly. In an effort to fend them off, I even used a stronger power that let me attack with several slices at once. I fought with everything I had, but no matter what I did, more and more continued to sprout around me. Things were not looking good. I can't keep up! On days 27 through 29, I was forced to make a run for it. I fled until finally spotting an abandoned mansion. I jumped inside and took cover from the onslaught of evil plant life. This place is insane! Just then, I heard ghostly noises coming from behind me. When I turned around, there was a horde of ghosts waiting. Intruder, protect the fossil at all costs. The ghosts swarmed me, and I braced myself for battle. Immediately, they began to swipe at me with their icy cold hands, slashing and trying to hold me for the other ones to pile on me. They also had ear-piercing screams that released a ghostly blue aura that shook me to my core. Even though I was hitting them hard with my own attacks, they were really stubborn and continued to come right back for me. I unleashed everything I had, dashing out of the way of their attacks and slicing and dicing. The whole fight, I kept thanking my lucky stars for my shadow creature power. It was only thanks to them that I was able to land any hits on these guys to begin with. Both sides fought with all of their might. It seemed like neither of us were going to give in. I'll never surrender. The Radiant Rex will never get our fossil. Did you say Radiant Rex? I quickly explained myself to the ghost. We were on the same side. Once they heard my story, we came to a truce. If it means the end of the Radiant Rex, then we'll allow passage to the fossil. Maybe then we can be left alone to rest in peace. In peace. Suddenly, the Radiant Raptors showed up to stop me. We'll hold them off. Run now. On days 30 through 33, I moved deeper into the haunted mansion as the ghosts held off the raptors for me. I need to find that fossil. Jack is running out of time. I navigated through the halls of the mansion, but it seemed like there was no end in sight. It was as if the building itself was playing tricks on me. I needed to break the cycle. Every second I wasted was a second more that Jack was in danger. I ran to a nearby exit and ended up pretty far away from the mansion. Everything was quiet until a creature ran up in the darkness. What's that? I ran after it using my quick raptor feet. However, just as I thought I was going to catch up, the ground crumbled beneath me. I fell into the darkness below. On days 34 through 36, I woke up in a mysterious large arena within a deep dark biome. There, I saw the fossil sitting on a pedestal nearby. Did that creature lead me here on purpose? I better go get that fossil quick. I started to approach the pedestal when suddenly I heard the sound of heavy footsteps walking in my direction. I saw up ahead and realized that a mutant warden was lurking inside of the deep dark. No sudden movements! I snuck around anxiously, trying to stay as quiet as possible. The mutant warden tried to pick up on my vibrations, but I took extra care to move in small increments at a time. I slowly got closer and closer to the fossil, but I suddenly stepped on a stick! A loud crack echoed through the chambers, and I had foolishly given away my location! The warden lunged at me, and I braced myself! On days 37 through 40, I was facing off with the mutant warden. He had me in size and strength, but I had to get to the fossil if I wanted to save Jack. Right off the bat, this monster tried to smash me into paste. His fists were enormous and caused debris to fly off the ground every time he struck it. 
Although I was quick to dart around with my powers, he managed to land solid blows that almost knocked the wind out of me. I did my best to whittle away at his health. Although every slice brought him lower, it wasn't nearly enough to slow him down, which was a huge problem. Because not only was he insanely strong, but super fast too. He would charge at me, roaring crazily, and all I could do was dart as quickly as I could out of the way. At one point, he managed to grab me and lifted me into the air, only to throw me around like nothing. I fought tooth and nail with everything I had, but I didn't stand a chance against the beast. I tried to make a run for the fossil, but all of my attempts were met with bitter failure. The mutant warden knocked me away, hit after hit, and my health was getting low. I tried to beat him with speed, but he could sense every step I took. He predicted my attacks and smashed into me for unbelievable amounts of damage. I was left with almost no health, and things seemed grim. Is this the end? On days 41 to 43, I was still fighting the mutant warden. I was just thinking I was done for when a little shadow saber-toothed tiger leapt in front of me. Hey, big guy, leave him alone. To my amazement, the little saber-toothed shot out an enormous fireball at the mutant warden. The beast immediately turned his attention to the saber-tooth and away from me. Get the fossil, now. You don't need to tell me twice. I rushed in and grabbed the fossil off the pedestal. The moment I touched it, its powers melded with mine. As I transformed into my final form, I felt stronger than I ever had before. 10 more hearts were available to me now, as well as a fantastic shadow ball ability that let me harness the powers of shadow more than ever before. I'm back and ready to go. Feeling empowered, I jumped back into the fray. You're just in time. I sure was. The mutant warden had done a number on my new friend. With my new abilities, I was able to kill him before he could do any more harm. Once that was over, I turned to the saber tooth. Who are you? I'm Shane. I'm always here to help my shadow brothers out. Good to meet you, Shane. But I have a friend who's in trouble. Come with me and you can stay at my base. But we have to hurry. On days 44 to 46, I returned to my base and touched the fossil onto Jack, instantly revitalizing him. I'm back. You saved my life. My second life, actually. I'm glad to see it. Oh, by the way, this is my new friend, Shane. Hi there. I'm the one who led Bronzo here to the deep dark where the fossil was located. I guess we make a team. What do you say, Shane? I say, I'm in. Together, we decided to expand the base. First thing first was to repair the giant hole in the roof, created by the Radiant Rex. After the roof was all patched up, I began making a room for my newest member, Shane. To finish it all up, I replaced the item frames with pedestals and placed the second fossil. I only needed four more to defeat the Radiant Rex. Wow, this place feels super cozy. Thanks for making me a room. No problem, Shane. You're part of the team now. Just then, the entire base began shaking. I knew it had to be Radiant Rex again. So this time, I went out to check it out myself. You stay here and keep guard. On days 47 to 50, I headed out to the base to check things out. After some creeping around, I found him nearby, performing some sort of ritual. Night, night, what a fright. The time has come to bring the light. In an instant, the wonderful cool of the night turned to searing daylight. Ah, hot! The sun began to burn me. Quickly as I could, I darted away to take cover in the shade of a nearby tree. Unlucky for me, the Radiant Rex heard me and started to sniff around again. I can smell your dark magic. Show yourself, Shadow Raptor. Laughing, he took to the sky and started to blast away at the trees to try to blow my cover. If he managed to uncover me, there was no way I stood a chance, especially in daylight. I looked around desperately and spotted a cave. It was now or never. Taking my chances, I ran for the cave and made it inside. On days 51 to 52, I merged on the other side in a forested area full of long necks. Wow, this place is interesting. To my surprise, the long necks were under attack by radiant forces. I lunged into battle, killing the radiants one by one. I used my shadow ball and my shadow blades. Eventually, I defeated all of the radiant forces and saved the long necks. A shadow raptor in broad daylight? What are you doing wandering around? I don't have much time to explain. Radiant Rex has casted a spell to turn darkness into light. There ceased to be nighttime any longer. He's after me right this instant. Sounds like you're in dire need of assistance. I know a witch doctor who may be able to help you in these circumstances. Follow me. The long neck guided me to the local witch, and there she evaluated me. 
so that the clouds can protect you from the sun at your will. First, you have to hold this rainmaker, then start the dance. The witch began showing me how it was done, and just like that, the rain began pouring down in an instant. Now you try it. I did just as the witch did, and it was working. Clouds covered the sky, and it began to downpour. Wow, it's actually raining. Unfortunately, it worked too well. The village began flooding, and I couldn't undo it. Eventually, the rain came down so hard that I got washed away. Help me! On days 53 to 55, I woke up in the ocean, super low on breath. If I didn't get out, I was going to drown. My lungs burned, and I was certain I was going to die when an aquatic dinosaur came to the rescue. Once she approached me, she gave me the power of water breathing and dolphin's grace. As I was suddenly able to breathe, I felt the burning in my lungs go away. Thank you so much, Miss... Uh... My name is Aqua, but we better keep moving. Why's that? Out of the blue, a horde of Radiant Rex's aquatic forces arrived. That's why. There's the thief. Get her! They started to charge at us! Run, Aqua! On days 56 to 58, I was fighting the aquatic forces while Aqua was taking cover somewhere. Fighting underwater was a whole new experience for me. It was really hard to move well since I was still getting used to swimming. But with the help of the dolphin's grace, I managed to pull it off really well. While the aquatic forces stabbed and slashed at me with their spears, I darted around them with my own trusty blade and hit them whenever their guard was lowered. There were still members of the aquatic forces though. They used their home territory to their advantage harnessing the power of water to fuel their attacks. In the end though, they were no match for the Shadow Raptor. With a few more well-placed Shadow Balls, I managed to knock them out. I then swam over to Aqua where she was hiding. There you are. What was that about? I may have stolen their super secret map that leads to a priceless treasure, maybe. I thought that this map might lead us to another fossil. Awesome, you're the best Aqua. Take me to the treasure. Yeah, I'm glad you're on board. Let's go get it! Together, we followed the map, and it led us to an underwater palace. However, there was one problem. This place was protected by the light! Don't worry, I've got this. Aqua zipped through the light beams, taking away the light protection on the palace. Only problem was, it alerted the guards! I'll deal with them. Go inside and get the treasure! I did not hesitate to stick around and find out what would happen, so I swam into the palace. On days 59 to 61, I arrived inside of the palace. There was one catch. The priceless treasure was in fact the third fossil. Hey, I was looking for that. Stop right there. I whipped around to see a blue and yellow serpent lady. It was the head of the Radiant Rex's aquatic army. How nice. It appears you've delivered yourself right to me. Once I take your head, I'll be promoted to the head of the guard. Not if I have anything to say about it. She lunged at me, trying to spear me straight in the heart at the get-go. I leapt out of the way and darted back at her with my blade, launching shadow attacks at her as she summoned nets of kelp to try and restrain me. She even began to sing, which would cause my vision to be shrouded in darkness. I wasn't deterred at all by this. In fact, it just motivated me to fight harder. The moment she was distracted, I grabbed the fossil right off its pedestal. Immediately, our powers began to merge. I gained five more hearts, as well as a teleportation power. Boy, you insufferable vermin! You're going down! I felt rejuvenated from the power of the fossil. Her previous attacks still stung, but now I was stronger than ever. As she slung spell after spell after spell at me, I darted around her with my teleportation and shadow blade power. She was hardly able to hit me. Soon, I hit her with one last powerful shadow ball. Thanks to my determination and awesome new power, I was finally able to defeat Mariana, the leader of the aquatic army. But my celebration didn't last long. Out of nowhere, the Radiant Rex appeared overhead. Celebrating too soon as usual. Looks like you took the bait. Below me, the floor turned into magma blocks. No! The magma blocks pull was stronger than I could push against. There was no way for me to escape, and they were burning me whittling my health down bit by bit. With Radiant Rex watching from above, I soon lost too much health and blacked out. 
On days 62 to 64, I woke up trapped inside of Radiant Rex's base, up in the clouds. He flew before me, towering over me like a thunderous cloud. You've stirred up enough trouble for my liking. Time to eliminate you once and for all. The Radiant Rex charged up a powerful attack, but to my surprise, Shane interrupted it. You leave Bronzo alone, you floating block of gold. Shane attacked Rex, but it was clearly no match for his crushing strength. Radiant Rex landed a critical blow onto Shane. Shane, no! With such a powerful attack, Shane died immediately. No! I was so enraged that I broke out of my containment cell. I knew it wasn't wise to stay and fight Radiant Rex, so I ran for my life, hoping not to get caught. General, after him. I have other things I must attend to. On days 65 to 68, the head general of the Radiant Rex floated up to the sky base. And so the chase began. He was a crazy, angelic dragon who was swifter in the air than anyone else I had ever seen. If I was going to get away, I had to distract him. But I was so angry about what he had done. You'll pay for what you did to Shane. Take this. In a rage, I fired shadow attack after shadow attack at him. He was so sturdy, though. None of my attacks bothered him. <laughs> Is that all you've got, Shadow Raptor? Unfortunately, it was. The head guard took the opportunity to attack me again. His attacks rained down godlike lightning bolts, causing the very air to flash and rumble. In the face of such force, I had to keep moving. I ran until I realized there was nowhere else to go. It was all a loop. No, I'm stuck. There was nowhere for me to go. And more importantly, I had a decision to make. It was either face the general or take a leap of faith and jump off the side. Ugh. Here goes nothing. I ran the last few blocks toward the edge of the cloud and jumped, plummeting toward the ground below. Looks like that foolish raptor chose death. <laughs> I better tell the boss of our victory. On day 69 to 71, I was about to die from fall damage, but Jack ran in and used a bucket of water to save me. Water bucket clutch. Jack, my hero. Anything for my best friend. Hey. Where's Shane? He didn't make it. Oh no, say it's not so. I know, it's awful, but Jack, we're not safe here. The general might find us. Follow me, I know a place we can hide. Without hesitation, I followed Jack. Eventually, we ended up in an abandoned village in ruins. What is this place? This was my home, before it was ravaged by the Radiant Rex. He's the reason I'm a skeleton now. He truly is a monster. We have to make him pay for this. Intruders! I turned around, only to find a large Triceratops charging at us at full speed. On days 72 to 74, Jack and I ran away to avoid the Triceratops horns. They chased all the way into a crater, cornering us. Wait, please! We're friendly! We're enemies of the Radiant Rex! You're also against the Radiant Rex? Fine. You need to come with me. The Triceratops led us to a mysterious looking altar. It was similar to the ones that would have artifacts on them. The only difference was that the one meant to be here was missing. This village was once protected by a fossil that allowed shadow creatures to roam in the sunlight, but the Radiant Rex stole it, leaving us defenseless to his might. There's gotta be a clue here, somewhere. I spotted a weird chunk of stone jetting out from the wall. It was a button. I wonder what this does. I hit it, and to everyone's surprise, a stairway opened up in front of me. Bingo! In the next split second, the Triceratops that had kindly helped us was shot dead by a light attack. No! Who did that? I looked up to see the head guard from before had found us. He looked like he was going to attack again at any moment. Bronzo, we need to split up. You head into the passageway. Don't worry about me. Got it! I went running down the steps that had mysteriously just appeared. On day 75 to 76, I entered a temple room where the fourth fossil was sitting on a pedestal. There it is. I'm so close to obtaining it. Unfortunately, it was surrounded by light protectants. I can't believe it was under our nose the whole time. I broke through the light beacons and suddenly the room shook. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on? Out came Zidri once again to stop me. What did you do to Jack? Defeat me, and you might find out. 
The general transformed. With the power of the light, he was able to shield himself in a full set of armor. The general was brutal with his new armor. As he stomped around, he shook the very arena, causing debris to spray from the earth. Even with the armor, he was still fast. The general leapt up and slammed back down over and over with his full weight, knocking me around like a doll. Sometimes I managed to dodge out of the way thanks to my shadow powers, but it was often a close call. I threw shadow ball after shadow ball at him, hoping to do some damage, but the armor was too tough. The general roared and continued to strike at me. I was losing the battle, but I knew I couldn't give up. There was too much on the line. I mustered up the strength and grabbed the fossil mid-battle. Suddenly, I gained the ability to grain a powerful line of falling rocks and immunity to sunlight. Ha ha! Now nothing can stop me. Not even the rays of sun. I used my newfound powers to create boulders and hit them when they least expected it. The rocks were so sharp and heavy that they pierced right through the general's armor. Eventually, I was able to defeat the beast. Yes, I did it! Wait! I have to make sure Jack is okay. On days 77 to 78, I ran outside to find that Jack was caged up. With the dawn approaching, there were only seconds before the sun would burn him alive. Jack, I'm here for you. I rushed to his side, and after quickly breaking through the cage, I used the power of the fourth fossil to protect him. You saved me, thank you. I don't think the Radiant Rex is going to be happy I killed his general. We better regroup at home. Jack and I returned to our base. When we reached the inside of the base, I told Jack everything that had happened. After we had chatted, I added the third and fourth fossil to my display room. Why don't you take a short break? While you do, I think this base is in need of some upgrades. Let me take care of that. I guess I could use a nap. Okay, I trust you. As I napped, Jack got to work. He started out by digging out more of the cave. The room he was working on was an underground farm. It would help feed us if we ran out of food and would just be a nice place to relax. He added little sections of farmland full of carrots, potatoes, and wheat and made sure they all had enough water. Jack also added some decor. He planted some wonderful flowers and decorated the floor with mossy cobblestone and stone bricks. To light it all up, he hung copper lanterns from the walls. Not only did he do all that, but he also added a beautiful waterfall area for Aqua to be able to stay in, with a long water path so she can come and go as she pleased. This looks great, Jack! Thanks, I did my best. Now that Aqua had a place to stay, a little bit later she showed up at the base. Bronzo, I came with important news. I figured out where Radiant Rex has a secret base. Sounds like infiltration time to me. On days 79 and 80, I followed her to the Radiant Rex's outpost. I climbed out on land and peered inside. I watched as the Radiant Rex talked to one of his raptors. Sire, the giant shadow raptor defeated our general. He's just been getting stronger and stronger. I'm afraid that pretty soon he might even be able to defeat you. Excuse me, what did you just say? I said that at this rate, pretty soon, I think he might be strong enough to defeat you! Oh, I heard you. I just thought you wouldn't be stupid enough to utter those words twice. You and I both know that there is no possible way that puny rat could ever compare to me. He is nothing. He is worthless. But sir, the last general he defeated was one of our strongest men! <laughs> that doesn't matter. That oversized bird brain wasn't strong anyway. The new general will now take his place. New general? You don't mean... Come forward! The general in question stepped forward. He was a massive red dragon. Are you sure they're powerful enough? Of course they are. Are you doubting the strength of a red dragon? They are far stronger than any one of your useless dinos. Useless dinos? That's a bit rude, sir. They aren't useless, they are just not too useful. Exactly. Now we've our new Red Dragon General and those pesky dinos out of the way. Defeating that insolent Shadow Raptor should be a walk in the park. But sir, the Shadow Raptor is incredibly powerful. I think we've been underestimating his strength. Then let's put those worries to rest. General, why don't you give them a demonstration? The new general struck out and killed the raptor in one blow. Inconsequential. He's killing his own forces! This guy is ruthless! <laughs> How splendid! That's what he gets for doubting me. 
Suddenly, the new general's head snapped in my direction. I sense dark magic. Oh no, I gotta get out of here! On days 81 to 82, I was being hunted by the new general. I had to be stealthy and make sure not to make any loud sounds. I wanted to stop and hide, but his nose was like a bloodhound. He was on my tail. Shoot, shoot! Maybe I can sneak around the base to find some more time. Eventually, I found an opening and I rushed back to the water to return with Aqua. Glad you made it out. If only I could block out my dark magic scent somehow. I think I know a way. Come with me, quick. I followed Aqua through the ocean until I reached the frozen biome. Inside of this area is where you'll find the next fossil. It should cloak your scent. That's perfect! Let's go! Mm -mm. Unfortunately, I can't go any further. You're on your own. On my own? But how am I supposed to find the fossil? Don't worry, I've gotten that taken care of. Here, look at this. She handed me a map that led directly to where I needed to go. If you follow this, it should lead you directly towards the fossil. It's a little ways away, but I believe in you, Bronzo. You can do anything you set your mind to. Thanks, Aqua. I needed to hear that. Be careful, though, Bronzo. Long ago, this icy tundra was filled with tribes of dangerous people, and they were masters of living among the ice. It's been a while since I've traveled through these lands, though, so I'm not sure if they're still around, but don't mess with them if you see them. All right, thanks for the advice. I'll keep my eyes peeled and steer clear of them. Make haste. As long as he can sense your dark magic, the general will keep following you. You don't have to tell me twice. On days 83 to 84, I followed the map through the icy tundra. As I traveled, I spotted a caveman concealed in the ice. Oh no, I think he needs my help. I knew I was being chased but there was no way I could just leave someone in need. Hey, can you hear me in there? The man appeared to be frozen solid, unable to respond. Hello? Ugh, I guess he's just giving me the cold shoulder. The only way to melt the ice is to use heat. Thinking quickly, I set up campfire all around the iceberg, and in a few moments, the ice melted, freeing the caveman from his frosty prison. Hi, are you okay? Where am I? How long has it been? Don't worry, you're safe now. I freed you from the ice. I don't know when you were frozen. I've only been here for 83 days, so at least- I know, dangerous! <laughs> Apparently, he'd seen too many mean dinosaurs before because he started freaking out and hitting me with his club. Ow, hey, that hurts! I didn't want to hurt him, so I begged him to stop. No, I'm friendly, I'm friendly! As I tried to avoid the caveman swatting, I spotted the general approaching in the distance. Uh-oh, uh, caveman, look, evil dino! Uh, dino? The caveman turned and saw the general. Thankfully, he considered the general to look enough like a dinosaur because he ran at him instead. No time to waste, gotta keep moving. On days 85 to 86, I continued to follow the map until I came to an icy lake. I had a really bad feeling, so I looked into the water. Inside were a bunch of frost crabs swimming around. They had one massive claw and one small. They also came in various different colors, such as purple, blue, and red. Oh, that's not so bad. As I watched, a cute little dolphin swam by. It was immediately killed by one of the crabs. Man, they're more vicious than I thought. I don't want to fall in there. I better be careful. It would be embarrassing to be the only known shadow raptor to turn into crab food. Meanwhile, my parents died with valor. With that dolphin in mind, I began to jump from iceberg to iceberg, trying to make my way across the lake without touching the water. The crabs looked at me with eagerness, waiting for me to drop in so they could feast upon me. I made sure to be extra aware of every jump. Okay, next one. I jumped again and slipped, almost falling into the lake. Luckily, I stopped myself in the nick of time. Woo, that was a close one. Why must I be doing this now of all times? Shadow Raptors don't belong on ice. I turned around and realized the general was still pursuing me. Watch your step, little raptor. I wouldn't want to have to rescue you from the flesh-eating crabs. I'd like to kill you personally. Why don't you stop yapping and come do something about it then? The general flew up into the skies and bypassed all the icy obstacles and was gaining on me with immense speed. I began to regret egging him on. No time to think! I picked up the pace, and in doing so, I began to slip and slide crazily. This was so risky. Fortunately, I made it across without being fish food and kept moving. On days 87 to 88, I finally arrived at the location on the map. It was a massive 
ice temple. It towered hundreds of feet into the sky and was intimidating to say the least. Wow, this place is impressive. Whoever built this must have been an architectural genius. There were icebergs scattered around everywhere, but more importantly, I saw the fossil there waiting for me on a pedestal. There it is. I better snag that fossil before. Just then, the temple began to shake with immense force. What the? What's going on? Why is everything rumbling? I approached the fossil even more, but something wasn't right. Is this an earthquake? All of a sudden, an ice golem fell from the top of the temple. Turn back, greedy dino. That fossil is mine. But I need it. You don't understand. I have to stop the Radiant Rex. I don't give an icicle's tip about you or your Radiant Rex. I've been the protector of this fossil for centuries. Then I'm sorry to have to be the one to end that. I don't think so. Ah! The ice golem then lashed out on me. On days 89 to 90, I fought the ice golem that was defending the fossil. They began by clobbering me with giant snowballs. They were packed so tightly, they felt like stone. I dodged with my shadowy abilities and sliced through him when I had the chance. The frozen behemoth unleashed some sub-zero steam into the atmosphere, making me freeze. I thought I wasn't gonna make it, but knew I couldn't give up after all of this. I summoned more and more rocks above the golem's head and weakened him. Then I charged up one last shadow ball to defeat him. No! I was the protector of this fossil! He sure was a tough one, but I always came out on top. The ice golem was no more. Time to get the fossil. You're too late for that. I whipped around to see that the general had caught up to my scent. That doesn't belong to you, boy. Who you calling boy? Oh, sorry. Would you rather be called chicken? No, I'd rather be called the guy who destroys the Radiant Rex and all his little henchmen. With no time to waste, I lunged for the fossil. I managed to grab it and fused with its power. I gained five more hearts, as well as an ice crystal. You insufferable creature. The general attacked. I thought that with this next fossil's power, I would be equally matched with him. But the general was impossibly powerful. Not only did he spit fire, but he was able to cloak himself in it too, making it really difficult to hit him. He used his agility to his advantage too, soaring into the air and striking me from above with a storm of flame. I did my best to retaliate with my new icy powers and my shadow raptor abilities, but I just couldn't match the heat. There was no other way to do it. I had to retreat. Fast as I could, I turned tail and ran. Run all you want, Raptor. I'll find you and bring you back to the Radiant Rex. On days 91 to 92, I returned back to the base. I'm so happy to see you're okay. I'm glad to see you too, buddy. I need to get my mind off all this chaos. Why don't we expand the base a little bit? Heck yeah! I decided to make a room to forge my armor for battle. I had to make it super big to fit everything that needed to be inside. Armories need a lot of heat to melt the metal, so I made lava falls that I'd be able to use. I made a stream that led directly to the forging spot I'd picked out, where I placed anvils, blast furnaces, and even a pulley system connected to chains and rope. I also made a lookout tower to spot enemies coming from afar. I used blackstone to match my shadowy theme and made the tower tall enough for me to be able to see enemies coming from miles. Finally, I placed the fifth fossil on the pedestal to admire my hard work thus far, but there was still more to do. I just need one more and I should be able to take on the Radiant Rex. Hey Bronzo, I want to show you something. I followed Jack, and he showed me what he had built. It was an entire full-scale statue of me. Wow, Jack, this is amazing. I wanted to make this as a thank you for all that you've done for me. Aw, oh, thank you. You're the best buddy I could ever ask for. But can I ask one more thing of you? For you, Bronzo, anything. I need you to drop a like on this video. Comment down below which fossil power was your favorite. Also, if you enjoyed this content, subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. Absolutely, I'm gonna go do that right now. Just then, the Radiant Rex flew over. What, where's he headed? I decided I should follow close and find out. On days 93 and 94, I tailed behind the Radiant Rex. He led me right to the final fossil. That dummy doesn't know what he just did. I creeped around so I could listen in and gain some intel. He was talking things over with the general. That wasn't good news. Looks like that pesky Shadow Raptor hasn't found this one yet. Good. What should we do with the relic, sir? 
absorb its power for ourselves? Not yet. I must make the correct preparations. If done incorrectly, all of my plans will be ruined. I understand. I will take the relic and hide it where the dumb shadow chicken will never find it. And don't underestimate him. That raptor is smarter than he lets on. What's that supposed to mean? Don't worry, sir. I won't let him get his nasty claws on it. The second he reveals himself, I will eliminate him. You had better not. I'm more than willing to show you why I am the leader here. I will make you regret ever crossing me. I would do anything to serve you, O Radiant One. I vow that I will not let you down, and I will fight until my last breath. I know that I can rely on you, General. The general picked up the fossil. Then the both of them left with it in hand. Looks like they're gonna try to set me up. Good thing I'm one step ahead. I chased after them, hot on their tail. I was getting that last fossil, one way or another. On days 95 and 96, I arrived at a large vault to find the Radiant Rex already leaving. The place was crawling with Radiant Raptors. They were walking around everywhere, including at the entrance. They must have it locked up inside. I better stay hidden. I crouched low and snuck around the surrounding boulders and trees. So long as I stayed in the shadows, there was no way they could see me. Thanks to my dark scales, I was about to reach the vault entrance when a raptor spotted me. Oops, maybe that doesn't work as well as I thought. Before he could say anything else, I hit him with a shadow attack and killed him. Then I dashed off and hid. Thankfully, the other raptors just looked around and walked away. That was close. On days 97 to 98, I headed inside of the vault. There, on a pedestal, was the sixth fossil. Quick as a dart, I dashed forward and snatched it. When I grabbed it, nothing happened. Wait, is this a fake? <laughs> Looks like you fell right into my trap. Prepare to die. There's no way I'm going down here. We'll see about that. Yeah, I guess we will. This time, I was the first one to attack. I slugged my shadow ball at him with as much force as possible. It slammed into him, enraging him. The general advanced and breathed blistering hot fire at me, shooting blasts in rapid succession. It felt like each one held the force of a thousand suns, impossibly radiant. The general was something else. I was on the defensive now, trying to use my attacks to keep him away from me. Similar to last time, he cloaked himself in flames to become a living fire and bring the heat ever closer to me. I was lucky to have my Shadow Raptor blade that let me dart around so fast. Eventually, the general had enough and flew up into the air to rain fire from above. It was a nasty trick because he knew it would be harder for me to hit him from the ground. I figured he had to be low on health though or else he wouldn't have retreated. I mustered up the final bit of power within me and killed the general. Ha! Take that! Upon dying, the general dropped the real fossil and I gained 10 more hearts and a final power. It was a fire burst, similar to what Shane used to have. Time to make the final preparations. On day 99, I returned home to tell Jack the good news. There was a fake fossil, but then I killed the general and there it was, the real fossil. Oh, and I got a super cool new power. That's awesome. What are you waiting for? Go put it in the treasure room. Jack was right. I went to my pedestal room and placed the last fossil down. Suddenly, I was hit with a vision. I was in a dream world with my parents standing right before me. Mom, Dad, is that you? It is, son, and we want you to know something. What is it? First of all, we're proud of you. You've come so far since your first day in this world. Thank you. I fought hard to get here. We know. We watched you. You did? Of course, son. We were always watching over you since day one. The battle ahead, though, will be unlike anything you've ever faced. It won't be easy. But we believe in you. You can do it. How do you know if I'm strong enough to win? You've overcome so much so far. We know that even if this battle is hard, you will see it through. You're right. I love you both, and I'll avenge everyone. I swear. Good luck, son. And look up. I snapped back to reality. Look up. I heeded the warning, only to find that the roof of my base was broken open. The Radiant Rex had arrived, and he meant business. On day 100, I was in the final confrontation between myself and the Radiant Rex. Looks like we finally meet again. At last, I've hunted you down. 
Your pathetic life will end here, and nothing will stop me from eliminating the rest of you shadow creatures. You, your friends, everything you know will be hunted to extinction. Unfortunately for you, I've got a few new tricks up my sleeve. Oh really? Well, you're not the only one. In a flash, he and I were teleported away from my base and into a huge sky arena. It was a major update from his original sky base. Why must you destroy all life? Shouldn't a being of radiance want to help and create life? You are wrong, shadow creature. It is you who is destroying the light. I must read the world of shadow. Shadow and light can live in harmony, just as it has for billions of years. No, the darkness must be gone. I won't let that happen. I've worked so hard to keep balance. All your effort is for naught. Let the warmth of my light wash over you and embrace your end. I disagree, Radiant Rex. This is your end. In a fury, I attacked, darting forward with the power of my Shadow Raptor Blade. Quick as a bullet, I slashed back and forth, slicing at the Radiant Rex everywhere I could reach. The life began to drain from him, but he was tough enough to shake it off. With a roar, he started to charge a Radiant attack. Motes of light gathered around him, collecting into a huge beam that he blasted straight at me. He followed up by raining down light rays at me, some catching me directly enough to set me on fire. I countered with my frost attacks at him, and he was all too quick to send stars shooting right back. That blinded me. The Radiant Rex was by far the most difficult foe I had ever faced. Not only was he powerful, but I had the whole weight of the world on my shoulders. But that same weight that made it tougher also drove me farther. There was no way I would let Radiant Rex win. Not this time or ever again. I could tell he was getting desperate. He pulled out his blasting attacks that started to destroy the very arena we were on. I knew that this was it. It was now or never. In a last burst of strength, I unleashed the most powerful shadow ball I had ever used. It hit the Radiant Rex head on, defeating him at long last. I had won. Yes.